So the boat is, uh, is, is a boat that belongs to Sir Peter Blake, very famous, uh, of, your, famous of your sailors. Um, and uh, we, bought it, we bought her uh, 16 years ago uh, with Agnes B, who was the founder of this project, the beginning, the, the designer. And the boat is taking scientists, I mean seven to eight scientists, uh, all year long across the world on different topics. Uh, and what makes this project quite s unique or singular is that we doing long-term expeditions. Like we do six months to four years in a row expedition. We look at the plankton, we look at the plankton all over the world. We look at the plastic, we look at the plastic all over the world since 10 years. It's really a long-term process about uh, understanding the ocean and understanding, understanding its threats. Usually all over the place people use uh, this kind of, 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 uh, of uh, nets, you know, one meter that floats on the surface of the ocean. This is buoyancy for the, for the floating. And uh, so you put this, but you put this for in the water for a few minutes, a few, a few like ten minutes, and, it's, and at the end here there is a this kind of system. That is that is everything that has been collected. Okay. So on board we, we collect, we sort a lot of plastics. Okay, and uh, we put them in tubes for further analysis in the labs. And we, most of them, we store them in liquid nitrogen. So we have liquid nitrogen here, one minus 180 degrees Celsius, to fix the DNA, the genomics, the, all the, the molecules of uh, DNA. We use a lot of DNA uh, genomics to DNA um, technology to find out which are the species we talk about and which are the interaction, which species are sticking to the plastic, but which ones are affected. And which, and which food chain is affected down the road. We did, we did use this every three, four days since uh, 10 years, from Antarctica to the Arctic, everywhere we've been, to measure, uh, to, to describe uh, this uh, stock of plastic in the ocean. And this year we look at the fluxes from the land to the, to the ocean, in ten, 10 of the greatest rivers of Europe. And Thames is the first one. Nanoplastic, just in the water, you find everywhere you look for it. Nanoplastics, fibers. And nano are very, very dangerous because nano they can go through the, 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 the cell uh, membrane. So they start to interact really, really much with the ecosystems. And in the ocean, it's full of cells, you know. Microalgae in the ocean, they are all one cell, just one cell. So you imagine how many cells you can be infected in. And these microalgae are the ones eaten by mussels, by organisms in the ocean. They use this grass, it's the grass of the ocean in fact. It's amazing. When you look really carefully, it's pretty scary in fact what you see. So. And here is the, we call it the wet lab. So here's the lab we put on the dock, on the deck since a long time now. And this is a filtration thing, systems where we filter the water. Because if we take all the water back to the labs, you end up with a cargo ship in the end. Some uh, membranes, so small membranes, paper, paper in fact, to, to, to filter the plastics and all this uh, water, water we collect. And these, these filters that are sent back in tube like that in the labs afterwards. And over the last 10 years, 100,000 uh, tubes have been collected on this uh, boat. We also, we also put mussels Mussels cage, mussels in a cage, a month ago, up the river, to filter and to uh, accumulate some uh, pollutants, plastics, and so we're going to collect them today. We have not much plastic on board because we we we, we buy a lot of food uh, with a uh, vac. I mean, uh, without packaging. At the beginning of the mission, the, the boat is full of food now. So we don't have much plastic, and when we have, we put them in the recycling system where we're in. So you have five crew members, or six, depending on the load, and um, six scientists, and um, one media guy, one artist, usually. Today there is an anthropologist. Anthropologist, who study how the connection between all these issues with mankind, and where have, how can we end, have ended up so far. 
For the scientists, are not from the foundation. They are collaboration with labs, public labs. Everything we do is open source, open data, of course. This boat has been designed to, to drift into the Arctic Ocean, so to go in the cold areas. So the last two years, we, two or three years, we, we've been in the Pacific Ocean to study coral reefs in the tropics. It was a disaster inside, it was too hot. But it was a huge expedition, some, I think the, some of the biggest push from plastic understanding so far, bleaching, most of it. The bleaching, nobody knows how really what works. We discovered plastic when we, we, we were looking for plankton 10 years ago. We started for a year to sample plankton across the world. And after a year of sampling, we realized that we had plastic in every nets we could collect on the surface. And then we start to have uh, dedicated protocols to look at this 10 years ago. It was really the beginning of the, of, uh, the understanding there was plastic in the ocean. So this was, the boat was made for, to do this uh, This boat was made to do the, to do the Arctic drift, yeah. So what we did uh, 10 years ago. So this boat, so we stayed like that for a year and a half, non-stop. To study the ocean below, because, because the boat is touching the ocean all the time. And to the atmosphere on top of it and ocean, it was mainly climate studies. This is the paper we published, and we did the cover of uh, the, fame, the Hall of right? Fame yeah. of Science. Yeah. Uh, so we did the cover of Science t four years ago. Uh, we did this one, the Ware Ocean Gyms, in uh, 2018, January, last year. And this is a uh, month ago, the cover of Cell, discovering uh, 200,000 new viruses of the water, which is very not dangerous for us but very important for the equilibrium of ecosystems. Viruses, they really have a huge impact on that. You know him? You heard about him before? He won the Maker's Cup uh, twice, three times. He won the World Aways. He was a New Zealander, not a British guy, maybe. He was a Kiwi, yeah. Great man. So this is a dry lab, you have a wet lab outside, it's a dry lab, we don't take water here. I speak not well. So usually it's full of stuff, but this, for this expedition we have more need of a uh, loop of, uh, of uh, lines to sort things. Yeah, so it's more about manual work than electronic work. Usually it's full of electronic, you can see holes everywhere. And so that's a dry lab. And uh, let's see here. Is it? Yeah, so that's the they are prepared for the next uh, sampling, already all batched. And so here's the forward hold where we store uh, all the, the food for the crew, uh, the freezers. We store the samples, minus 20. We store also chemicals and also some uh, some uh, samples of water. We make water, of course, we do like you. We do uh, reverse osmosis to, to, to desalinate water for our use. We drink it huh? all, all the time, we drink this water. Not the one from the Thames, <laughs> but when we are at sea, we drink it uh, straight, uh, straight at the bottom of like this. 300 liters an hour. Yeah, we have a good, uh, good output. Enough for, for showers, for to, to rinse the materials, the scientific materials, and for food and for, for kitchen and for, for drink. Now, voilà, 